In the last video, we talked about what happens when you diagonalize an arbitrary unitary operator. In this video, we're going to talk about the example that, that motivated the whole subject, which is rotations in good old three-dimensional space. So first of all, let's look at the example of rotating things about the z-axis. So we rotate in the xy plane, we leave the z-axis alone. Now we've seen that the eigenvalues of this 2 by 2 matrix are cosine theta plus i sine theta and cosine theta minus i sine theta. In other words, e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta. And the third eigenvalue is 1. That's what you get from the lower right-hand corner. So those are our eigenvalues. And the eigenvectors, the eigenvector with eigenvalue 1 is 0, 0, 1. And that gives us our axis of rotation. The eigenvector with eigenvalue e to the i theta is i, 1, 0. And if you look at the imaginary part of that, that's 1, 0, 0. And the real part is 0, 1, 0. And if you take the cross product of the imaginary part with the real part, so e1 cross e2, you get e3, which is the axis of rotation. This is the signature of a counterclockwise rotation. The imaginary part of the e to the i theta eigenvector cross the real part gives you the axis. Finally, the trace. Well, you just add up the diagonal entries. Cosine plus cosine plus 1. That's 1 plus 2 cosine theta. It's also the sum of the eigenvalues. 1 plus e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. OK, so now let's switch gears and go to a general rotation, a rotation about any old axis. And the first thing to notice is that the axis itself is always an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. Because no matter what direction you're rotating around, the axis itself doesn't move. If we're rotating in the xy plane, then the z-axis doesn't go anywhere. Also, if the angle of rotation is theta, we've already seen that rotating by theta gives you eigenvectors, which are e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta. So if you ever have a rotation uh, by theta about some axis, then your eigenvalues are going to be 1 for the axis, e to the i theta, and e to the minus i theta. And that means the trace is going to be 1 plus 2 cosine theta, which means you can recover theta from the trace. Take the trace, minus 1, divided by 2, take the inverse cosine. Now that gives you the angle of rotation, but it doesn't tell you which way you're rotating, clockwise or counterclockwise. And that's a matter of perspective. If you look at a car, um, if you look at a car that's driving down the street, are its wheels turning clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, that depends on where you're looking at the car from. If you're looking from the driver's side, you're going to say that the wheels are turning counterclockwise. If you're looking from the passenger side, you're going to say they're turning clockwise. Also, if you have a matrix and its inverse matrix, they're both going to be rotations. If this is a counterclockwise rotation, this is a clockwise rotation. If this is clockwise, this is counterclockwise. Yet they have the exact same eigenvalues. The eigenvalues of R inverse are the reciprocals of the eigenvalues of R. But the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of e to the i theta is e to the minus i theta. And the reciprocal of e to the minus i theta is e to the i theta. So you can't tell whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise by looking at the eigenvalues. You have to look at the eigenvectors. You have to look at the eigenvector with eigenvalue e to the i theta, take its imaginary part, cross the real part, and if that's pointing in the direction of your axis, it's counterclockwise. If it's pointing opposite the direction of your axis, then it's clockwise. <clears throat> that's a subtle point. Not a big deal if you don't get the details of it. The important thing is to find the angle of rotation. So let's look at this example. Here's a matrix, and you can see that all three columns are orthonormal. In fact, they're all just permutations of each other. You just have two two-thirds and one minus one-third. And sure enough, <coughs> the cross product of the first of the first two is the third. Pro cross product of the second and the third is the first. Cross product of the third and the first is the second. The determinant is plus one, and this is 
They're orthonormal columns, so this is an orthogonal matrix. It's got to be a rotation. If it's a rotation, we should be able to find the axis and find the angle. So the angle is easy because the trace is 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. That's 2. So the cosine of theta has to be the trace minus 1 over 2, which is a half. Since the cosine is a half, theta has to be pi over 3, which is, say, 60 degrees. This is a 60 degree rotation about some axis. How do we find the axis? We find the eigenvector with eigenvalue 1, and we do that by row reducing r minus 1 times the identity. So there's r minus the identity. You row reduce it, and you get that the eigenvector is 1, 1, 1. Or if you want a normalized eigenvector, it's 1, 1, 1 over root 3. In fact, you can see that if you multiply this by 1, 1, 1, you get 1, 1, 1. The sum of the entries in the first row is 1. Some of the entries in the second row is 1. Some of the entries of the third row is 1. So 1, 1, 1 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. Now our second example is has the same columns as the first example, except I took this column and I moved it to the second slot, and took this column and I moved it to the third slot, and this column and I moved it to the first slot. I just permuted the columns, and that has the same trace. It's got a trace of 2, and in fact, it's the same axis, the same angle. It's just going the other direction. That means that it must be the inverse of the first matrix, and it is. It's the transpose of the first matrix. This is the transpose of this. It's an orthogonal matrix, so the transpose is the inverse. So the inverse of rotating counterclockwise is roti rotating clockwise. And our last example, again, the same columns in a different order, only now the trace is negative 1. If the trace is negative 1, then the cosine is minus 1 minus 1 over 2, which is negative 1, which means that theta has to be pi. So this is a rotation by 180 degrees about the same 1, 1, 1 axis. And how is a rotation by 180 degrees related to a rotation by 60 degrees? Well, if you do a rotation by 60 degrees three times, that's a rotation by 180. And if you rotate by 60 degrees the other way three times, that's also a rotation by 180. So without doing a whole lot of work, just by looking at traces, we could figure out, by traces and finding the, a single eigenvector, we can find out an awful lot about a matrix.